So this is a perch. This is a bony fish. So it's in the phylum chordata, the subphylum vertebrata, and the class Actinopterygii. Okay, this is bony fish. So unlike the shark, which just had cartilage, this now has proper bones, and we'll see that when we get into the dissection. So just a quick look at some of the external structures. We'll start at the head where things are, are fairly obvious. Uh, we of course have an eye up here, Okay, the mouth with its teeth is right here at the front. There's a pair of nostrils as well, uh, one on either side here. Okay, those have an olfactory or smelling function. And the other thing which is uh, unique to bony fish is this area right here. And it's in fact a plate, a bony plate. You can see me lifting it here. This is called the operculum. And the operculum protects the gills, which are lying directly underneath. Though They are very soft, feathery structures. So the gills provide, or sorry, the operculum provides the protection necessary for those gills. Uh, another thing we can see running right along here, this is the lateral line. This serves the same function as in the shark. It's used to detect vibrations or motions in the water. So this allows it to be aware of its environment and things moving around in it. A uh, quick look at some of the fins. So we have on the side here, sort of the chest area again, the pectoral fin. Okay, below that we have one of the two remaining um, pelvic fins. This is the pelvic fin. Up on the top, we have a dorsal fin, and you can see it's quite spiny, okay, this is sort of a bony structure as well. So this is one of the uh, dorsal fins, and there's a second dorsal fin down here, okay, so anterior and posterior dorsal fin. And then down here we have the anal fin, so-called because it is close to the, the anus, which would be right here. And then at the tail we have the caudal fin, okay. So let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Uh, we'll start with this animal. This is a male, and then we'll move on to the female. So up at the front here, um, we can see those nice, delicate, feathery gills. Um, that is, of course, the uh, surface for oxygen exchange or gas exchange. So you can appreciate why this operculum would be a useful adaptation for this animal. Below the gills, we should be able to find right here very small little structure. Um, this is the heart, what's left of it here. I'll see if I can find it a little bit better in the female. Yeah. You can see this little structure right here. This is the heart. Okay, very small in this little fish. So this is the heart right here. Um, lying behind that, there's this large glandular structure. This is the liver, okay? And maybe I'll just move the liver right out of the way so we can see what's lying underneath. Okay, move that a bit. So this uh, rather prominent sac sticking out the rear here, this is the stomach. And you can see at least one of the finger-like projections lying um, associated with it. That's the pyloric cica. And there are several of those. There's another little one right there. So from the stomach then, that turns into the intestine, which long, uh, lies along the ventral surface of the animal. So this is the intestine right here. It's been dislodged from where it would exit at the anus, but you can see it here, okay, and there's a few more coils lying up underneath. And then we have this very big structure right here. If I were to break into it a little bit, and I'll see if I can do that so we can see the texture. Um, there we go. So it has a very caviar-like texture, little eggs, okay. So this is the female gonad. This is the ovary. There's only a single ovary in the fish, okay? And we'll see how that differs from the male in just a moment. The other structure I want to point out, lying above here, we have this nice thin membranous sac lying along the whole dorsal surface right here. So this is um, one side of the membrane that forms the swim bladder. And the swim bladder, um, the animal is able to fill this cavity here with gases in order to um, float or, or achieve buoyancy in the water column. So by adding more gases, it's able to rise. By reducing the gases, it can float, okay? So it, it actually has some control over where its position will be in the water column. Okay, 
So that's the swim bladder. Let's take a quick look at the male. So um, the structures are all pretty much the same. Um, here's the liver right here. There's the membrane of the swim bladder. But this is where things get a little bit different. So this is one of the male gonads. I'll just lift that aside. So this is the testy. And you can see if I twist them maybe a little bit that there's another one lying underneath right here. So there's actually a pair of them. There we go. We can see both. Okay, so the fact that there is two tells us that they are testes. Males have two gonads, not one like the female. So that's the pair of testes, and that's what allows you to distinguish male from female.